Agron Stonebreak the Ogre Magi just can't help but want to hit you again and again and again. By harnessing the power of pure skill, you'll make sure your enemies stay put as you blast all of them down with a relentless barrage of spells. Running's not as fun as hitting, or the history of Ogre Magi. Ogre Magi is a melee intelligence hero who has pretty decent crowd control and can buff your allies. His ultimate allows him to cast his spells multiple times in a row, turning a simple instance of magic damage into a delete key at the whim of the RNG gods. While I would normally go through his spells in order, we should really start with Agron's ultimate first. Multicast is a passive ability that grants a percentage chance for the Ogre Magi to cast his spells multiple times in a row. Leveling this up allows extra multicast to trigger, with up to 4 casts in a row at max level. This also allows items that target enemies to be multicasted, letting you Hex, Dagon, and even Midas waves of creeps if you want. This is the signature and defining spell of Ogre Magi, and although you can't exactly control when it'll proc, good players know how to capitalize on positioning and item builds to abuse its absurdity. That said, his first basic ability is Fire Blast, a simple point-and-click spell that deals okay magic damage and stuns a target for a moderate duration. That's it. It's a good pickup early game for some crowd control and a gank, but it really shines once it's multicasted. It naturally scales later into the game, where it can lock an enemy down for a little over 3 seconds and deal close to 1000 magic damage. Following this is Ignite. This launches an orb at your primary target, as well as a random secondary unit, dealing damage over time and slowing down the enemy movement speed. When multicasted, it'll send out additional Ignite orbs to random enemies in the area, prioritizing units who aren't affected by the debuff. If an enemy gets hit multiple times in a row, the Ignite debuff will extend, allowing you to slow down your foes indefinitely. Mostly used early game as a harass tool, this can also help set up ganks and really control the opposing team during a big teamfight. Finally, the Ogre Magi's last basic spell is Bloodlust. This is a buff that you can place on allied units, increasing the movement speed as well as the attack speed of your chosen target. When multicast, this applies the buff to random allies within the spell's radius, potentially giving your whole team a huge boost to their mobility and DPS. You can also cast this on towers in case you need a little more muscle against the enemy, in which case, the towers will have increased attack speed, but they can't exactly walk around, so tough luck. When cast on Ogre Magi, this will grant extra attack speed on top of the base amount, which, combined with his natural tankiness, could let you go down the route of a tanky bruiser playstyle. Whichever pathway you decide to take with the Burly Boys, just know that once you come online, all it takes is a single multicast before it's all Ogre for them. Ogre Magi lucked his way into Dota All-Stars in patch 5.76 in October of 2004. Naturally, he uses the Ogre Magi Neutral Creep model, as well as its voice lines, which the team over at Valve took a whole lot of inspiration from, pretty much acting as the blueprint for the hero in Dota 2. Interesting note, his name is officially Agron Stonebreak Ur in this. His original description called him an intelligent warrior hero, adept at melee combat and arcane spellcasting. A bit ironic, don't you think? He had his first real backstory in 6.00, where the Magi was known as the champion of the Stoneblade Ogres. Agron is one of the strongest and smartest Sentinel heroes. Oof. His specialty being casting his spells multiple times, his damaging and supporting spells are unusually powerful. Supporting the Sentinel to defend his own land, he is a valued support hero for the Sentinel. This lore certainly gives him more of a personality, but another update in 6.49 would really bring him to form. Ogres, a race bred to be warriors, have no experience with the arcane arts, leaving Agron, who was born with a rare affinity to magic without guidance regarding his innate abilities. His own force of will harnesses his talent to produce elemental flames and explosions that consume his opponents. Being a natural warrior, he reaches into his own aggression to fuel his comrades' lust for battle. His savage, untapped magical potential is prone to fiery outbursts which enhance the potency of his spells. A towering force built on strength and magic, Agron is honored by his people and feared by his enemies. It's pretty funny how all of his Warcraft-era lore was based on the Ogre Magi's deep wealth of knowledge and affinity for combat. It's kind of a shame that his future counterpart would be such a dunce. The voice lines don't help Agron's case either. He's meant to sound really dopey, and it's pretty much exactly how he's going to be perceived moving forward. That way! No, that way! I'm with stupid. Me too! Me smash you! It's, it's clobbering, clobbering time. time! Before I forget, there's a medium neutral creep camp of ogres, with one of them sharing Agron's model. 
A fun tactic people used to do when picking the two-headed brute was to kill the blue ogre and just wait in its spot within the camp, blending into the environment in the most obvious way possible. Of course, you could use a Helm of the Dominator to take one of the brown ogres to make it seem like someone just started farming and didn't finish. Whatever you decide to do, nothing feels quite as good as a reverse drive-by with a 4x multicast. His original skills were fairly close in concept to the current set, though multicast had to go through a lot of changes before settling down. He originally had Firebolt, which was just a differently named Fire Blast, taken from Eridar Diabolus and Salamanders from the Warcraft 3 base game. It still does magic damage and stun, so nothing really different, but it does use a disjointable projectile, so you can see the spell coming your way. Instead of Ignite, the Ogre Magi had Lightning Shield, another ability straight from Warcraft 3, most notably used by the Shaman unit. This would place a shield on a target enemy, damaging all units around it, including your own allies and creeps. Although it was kind of weird with the units it would affect, it could be compared to Darkseer's Ion Shell, offering an AoE solution to creep waves. Next is Bloodlust, which actually comes from the Ogre Magi neutral creep itself. This spell's never had a major rework, so it's pretty similar to what we have now, although it wouldn't be able to target siege creeps or towers just yet. And of course, we have Multicast, which looks like it was meant to be called Double Cast, going by the original description for Agron. This works a lot differently than what you'd expect. Instead of giving a chance to cast a spell an extra time for free, this would cause all your basic spells to cast an additional time. But the spells would have increased mana cost, and even reduced damage in Firebolt's case to make up for it. In a technical sense, yes, these are multiple casts of your spells, but spending the mana for those extra casts is a huge downside, especially since you're stuck with the new mana costs after you level the spell up. The Feel Bad Parade would only continue as the spell kept getting tweaked over the next few patches. In 5.78, Firebolt was renamed to Fire Blast, and it no longer uses the Disjointable Projectile, which is an improvement against any blinky heroes who might be able to escape the stun. Lightning Shield was also allowed to be cast on allies, and Multicast would give Fire Blast a slight stun duration improvement at level 3, giving it a fairly respectable lockdown potential, but at that point in the game, it's pretty redundant. In 5.79, Multicast no longer reduced the Fire Blast damage, and Ogre Magi also received his first Aghanim Scepter upgrade here. It added on one extra Multicast per level of the spell, and by my calculation, a single Fire Blast could deal 1,125 damage before reductions. Not bad at all. In 5.80, Lightning Shield could be cast on your own units, completing the parallel to Ion Shell. Multicast had a few alterations as well. Lightning Shield was no longer multicast several times on different units. It now simply increased the damage per second of the spell, and its mana cost was increased alongside it. Fire Blast, however, really got the shaft. The mana cost was increased by a pretty significant amount, and multicast now extends the cooldown as well. Maybe the spell might have been too powerful before, but this feels like an overcorrection. You get to use the spell like twice before you have to go back to the fountain to regenerate the mana. It's pretty bad. In 5.82, Lightning Shield could no longer be cast on yourself for some reason, and the biggest slap to the face came in 5.84, where Fire Blast did get its base cooldown lowered, but Multicast increased the cooldown timer, up to an additional 47 seconds at max level. This early version of Ogre Magi seemed like it had a ton of problems, but they were really trying to make it work. Again, maybe he was really overpowered before, but with this bombardment of nerfs, who would even want to play him? In 6.00, Ogre Magi had the blessing of a mini rework. Lightning Shield was replaced with Ignite, and in contrast to how it is now, it could target only one unit at a time, and it didn't have an AoE. Multicast was changed as well, although I don't think it really lives up to the name. Its description says that it enables the Ogre Magi to rapidly cast his spells, giving them greater potency, but it would pretty much just upgrade his basic abilities. It would decrease Fire Blast and Bloodlust cooldown while increasing their mana costs, and it would give Ignite a radius increase per level. It should be noted that this wouldn't actually cause the spells to multicast, and the Aghanim Scepter upgrade was removed too. Already, this was such a nice revision that it made Agron relevant again. From here on, there's a lot of minor number adjustments, but for things worth mentioning, 6.09 gave multicast the chance to proc spells several times in a row. This patch also added a new Aghanim's upgrade, increasing the proc chance and number of casts per level. In 6.13, the multicast chance was increased to a flat 20% per level, while the Aghanim Scepter chance was increased to 30%. A whole lot of nothing would happen until 6.60, where multicast had its proc chance reworked. The updated chances would make multicasting as a whole more probable, but you're more likely to hit the double cast rather than the triple or quadruple. 
An excellent change overall, this lets Ogre Magi scale more smoothly as the game lasts longer, and it kept the allure of the 4x multicast alive and well. The added tiers of multicast chance really let Ogre be a persistent threat, and it's pretty dang funny to boot. The Aghanim's upgrade was dropped here once again, but with this considerable buff, he'll be alright. During the Warcraft era, it's good to see that they had a hero concept in mind and were able to adjust it to make it work, instead of scrapping the character altogether. His mechanic, although a bit gimmicky, is really unique and it's good to see it thrive. With a few good items, all it takes is a single multicast and it's all ogre for the enemy. What, you think I'm repeating my jokes? No no no, it just got multicasted. The Ogre Magi was reforged in Heroes of New Earth as the Blacksmith, part of the original cast of characters in April 2009. His model is that of a Dwarven Blacksmith, a pretty far leap from a two-headed Ogre, but the team at New Earth did a good job of adapting the hero to the gameplay. It's a character who would have a lot of knowledge about magic and armor, hence having intelligence as his primary stat, but would need the strength to put everything together, explaining his above-average strength gain. His lore gives extra reasoning for the clash on New Earth, the smoke-blackened foundries of the Iron City have long been known to produce the endless stream of weapons and armor that make the Legion's war against the Hellborn possible. But now, as manpower becomes harder to replace than supplies, the very blacksmiths themselves have joined the battlefield, bringing strength earned through decades of toil and mastery over fire itself. Is this well-written lore from New Earth? Consider me impressed. Even his voice responses bring life to the hero, sounding like he has a short temperament, but overall reliable and ready to head into combat. Let's hammer this out! My magic cannot be tamed! I like these odds. Forged with magic, tempered with strength. The Blacksmith is a direct port of Ogre Magi's 6.60 skill set, with a few extra features included. His spells are named Fireball, which is pretty much a 1 to 1 port, except for slight number differences. Flaming Hammer, which also reduces magic armor, in addition to the slow and damage over time, but it does taper off slowly. Frenzy, which also increases a unit's cast speed, along with their movement and attack speed, which makes it a great tool for magic-focused allies as well as the blacksmith himself. And finally, there's his ultimate, Chaotic Flames, which more or less is the same as Ogre Magi's ultimate, but get this, the Staff of the Master's upgrade changes the name to Risky Cast, although it used to be named m, -M, -M multicast which was way better by the way, and it gives him an unrefined fire blast of his own, but it also, <clears throat> gives your auto attacks a 10% chance to cast Fireball, Flaming Hammer, or Frenzy, and these casts don't share a cooldown with the basic abilities. This is quite possibly the most anarchistic and chaotic upgrade you could have given to the guy. And it's a damn masterpiece. Even if it is situational at best, I think this encapsulates what multicast is all about, and pushes it further into madman territory. Not to mention, it makes his auto attacks feel like they're creating an impact, whereas in Ogre's case, it's something you do while you're waiting for your cooldowns. With the little additions here and there to Blacksmith's skills, I think he represents a good amount of progression from Ogre Magi, focusing on improving the hero rather than making him unique. As interesting as Blacksmith's skills are, the fun doesn't end there. In a forum post in September 2009, a user by the name of Bali encountered an interesting glitch when getting into a game. On top of the textures being wonky, the minimap was replaced with the portrait of Blacksmith, just staring at him. Menacingly! In the same thread, user Rockman replied with, Want to look at your map? Too bad! It's me, Blacksmith! And thus, a meme was born. Too bad became the go-to response for any bad manners you wanted to inflict, and it even became integrated into the game, triggering whenever you would successfully disjoint a projectile or attack. In a very important update on patch 0.1.63, which was still relatively early in the game's lifespan, Fireball was given a Mushroom Cloud explosion whenever a 4x multicast successfully happened. This gave the spell a level of gravity and weight that it deserved, and it was depressing to be on the receiving end of a literal nuke. Last thing I want to bring up about the hero, Blacksmith has an alternate avatar called Ogre Blacksmith, which is an homage to Agron Stonebreaker. Although he doesn't have two heads, the character has his face split down the middle, with the red oni, blue oni motif. He even has a big dumb ogre voice to match with his Warcraft counterpart. Me like him squishy. Looking back, Blacksmith was a great representation of the Ogre Magi. Between the nukes and the chaos, the only logical way to play against him is to get hammered. On the Blizzard side of things, Heroes of the Storm has a playable Ogre Magi with one of the most distinctive traits in the world of MOBAs. Cho'Gall is a hero that requires two players to use, one controlling the movement of the hero alongside a few spells, and the other controlling a second set of spells. 
Unlike the other ogres we've seen so far, Cho and Gaul are both pretty smart guys, and their gameplay requires a lot more precision and cooperation, as opposed to her, der, fire blast, go, burr. The pair also have a skin that turns them blue, which is of course named Ogre Magi, making them resemble Agron. Although between you and me, I don't think they're blending into any background anytime soon. Ogre Magi headed his way into Dota 2 on May 24th, 2012, around version 6.74. Their design philosophy borrows a lot from the Warcraft model and voice lines. The concept art reveals that they had a very concentrated view of what they wanted the character to look like, although you can see that some of their faces are more serious, or at the very least, not dim-witted. Whereas the current ogre has one happy face and one angry face, all of these heads seem to be in alignment with each other, either being both angry, happy, or everything in between. Their weapons were mostly stabs, also this keyblade-ass number over here, but ultimately, a lot of different elements were taken from the designs and blended together to create Agron's current look. It also looks like they grappled with the ogre's color scheme, with one interpretation being a deep purple and others being closer to that classic fantasy brown. It even got to the modeling stage before settling on the blue, perhaps to create that connection to the previous model for the players. Taking a look at the beta icons, not too much can be said. It's funny and nutty, and the only talking point is how Multicast went from being one staff to three, which really conveys the spell better. His lore truly is a thing of beauty. A lot of the humor is better if you read it yourself, but in general, ogres are typically a stupid race of creatures, clothing themselves in dirt and reproducing with boulders and tree stumps. But once every generation or so, there's the birth of a two-headed ogre, who, using the awesome power of two brains, functions at a level most other creatures manage with one. These magi, however, are blessed with the divine quality of dumb luck, allowing them to flourish in spite of enemies, harsh weather, and an inability to feed itself. It's almost as if the goddess of luck felt pity for the race and took the ogre magi under her wing. His voice responses are among the more prominent ones in the game, both in performance and the writing. They're modeled after the original ogre magi's personality, so we've got the two heads arguing with each other and acting like a couple of dinguses. I'm the ogre magi! No, you are! When can I hit something? Who's stopping you? Running's not as fun as hitting. Not one bit fun. During the International 6 in August 2016, a game between EG and Alliance would lead to a legendary casting moment. EG had just won a crucial team fight with no buybacks available from the Alliance side. All they needed to do was rush the enemy base and right-click the Dire Ancient to secure the victory. But through some twist of fate, Alliance was able to hold. One by one, EG's members fell, and Universe desperately tried to take down the last sliver of health from the Ancient. EGM's Ogre Magi was able to whip out a last second 4x multicasted Fire Blast onto him, leading to LD on commentary elegantly shouting, Ding, 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 motherfucker! He goes down too! A true cherry on top moment, this allowed Alliance to turn everything around and take down the Ancient after a well deserved defense. To commemorate the play, the voice line was included in the TI-9 Battle Pass as a chat wheel sound, although it was tastefully censored with a frog croak. Speaking of TI-9, Ogre Magi bumbled his way into the finals of the Arcana vote against Windranger, and by all accounts, there's no way he should have been in there, especially since he went head-on against Faceless Void in the previous round. Fortunately, and much to the pleasure of Sir Action Slacks, Ogre Magi won the vote. And in December of 2019, the world was graced by Flockhart's Gamble. This would give the Ogre Magi a brand new set of icons, voice lines, animations, effects, a new model, and a mount. Story-wise, this doesn't add anything new or significant, but instead it tells the story of Flockhart the Firelark, a bird who'd been separated from her family and is paired up with Agron in order to reunite with her flock. It makes mention of the Goddess of Luck, but really, it's pretty much an excuse to give the big lummoxes a feathery companion. Unlike other voice packs, this Arcana's responses repeat a lot of his original lines, but they do add a lot of item pickup and hero kill lines, even one that references a Dark Willow copy pasta, which I, uh, may or may not cover in the future. So here it is now. Did you hear what they say about her? Heesh, some people! The Ogre Magi appears in Artifact as a common blue hero card, taking Multicast as the innate ability and Ignite as the signature card. It looks like he's going to get some changes soon, based on the Artifact blog, but originally, Ignite was an improvement card, dealing one piercing damage to each enemy before the action phase, but Multicast was the true menace. After playing a blue spell, there would be a 25% chance that a copy of that card would be placed into your hand, allowing you to reuse its effect, and it's all up to Lady Luck whether or not that happens. You could play a spell like And One For Me, which Agron also appears on. This puts a copy of a random item equipped by a hero into your hand, and if you multicast it just right, you could end up with a bench full of Horn of the Alphas, laying waste to your enemy's towers before they know it. 
The story of Artifact doesn't add too much to the Ogre Magi's lore, but the responses on the two respective cards do highlight his arrogance much more than Dota 2. He says things like, It's not easy being the smartest ogre in the world. There's lots of jealous people out there. And in reference to inventing a process of giving and taking things without involving murder, It's like sharing. But better, because we came up with it. In Dota Underlords, Ogre Magi appears as a Tier 2 hero under the Bloodbound, Brute, and Mage alliances. He's a fairly tanky unit and is equipped with Bloodlust, which, like in Dota, increases a unit's movement speed and attack speed. Of note, his voice acting is still done by Nolan North, though the portrayal has changed up a bit, and this interpretation definitely leans more into the hero's accent. Winning is more than dying! Oh, that's deep! Thanks. Came up with it myself. A couple of the Underlords also have a very low opinion of him. Some idiot invited the Ogre Magi to a card game, and one of his heads started cheating. If I don't break up the fight soon, they'll end up tearing the district apart. You know, Ogre Magi really is too stupid to be a useful thrall, but his refusal to bow to me needs to be addressed. Picking up where we left off from Dota All-Stars, in 6.74, Ogre Magi received a new Aghanim Scepter upgrade, granting him access to Unrefined Fire Blast, which the game describes as a more primitive version of Fire Blast. This gives him a fourth basic ability which is the same as Fire Blast, but it has a separate cooldown and costs 400 mana. The application of this was to give Ogre Magi an extra opportunity to CC an enemy, giving him a chance at an 8x multicast. In 6.75, Bloodlust could be cast on Siege Creeps, which is really useful if you happen to not be near any allies. In 6.79, Ignite would be able to multicast like his other abilities, although the spell is now disjointable. I guess it wasn't too useful to multicast before, but it now also prioritizes units who don't already have the debuff, so at least there's a reason for it. In 6.80, Unrefined Fire Blast mana cost was changed from a flat 400 to 60% of his current mana. A pretty interesting change, this means that you won't want to start off a combo with Unrefined Fire Blast in fear that it may drain you of everything, but since it scales with your current mana, that means Ogre will always have access to it, even if you get mana breaked. In 6.85, Bloodlust could now be cast on buildings. In a similar vein to Lich or Treant Protector, this gives your towers another way to deal with oncoming sieges, and it'll definitely make an enemy team reconsider before engaging around your buildings. In 7.00, Ogre received his first set of talents, which were all numbers driven. You know, the bad kind. 7.07 .07 revised this, but honestly, it's not all that much of an improvement, except for that sexy extra 275 fire blast damage, making a multicast of that spell all that more terrifying. In 7.20, multicast no longer provides improvements for his other spells, but they were all adjusted to make up for it. And in the most dangerous change to date, multicast can now proc on enemy targeted items. On top of this, Ignite now targets a second enemy near Ogre Magi, making it so much more valuable in the early game. Finally, in 7.23, if a target is hit with Ignite a second time, it now adds to the existing duration rather than refreshing it. It's weird that this wasn't the case before, but multicasting the spell now actually matters. Whether it's a single unit or a whole squad that you're dealing with, stacking on that Ignite timer is a sure way to make someone go crazy. With that, we're caught up with Ogre's kit, and the changes since being added to Dota 2 have made a world of difference. Although he's still very much a wacky hero on the surface, the Ogre Magi spells are strong on their own, and being caught off guard will put you in a world of hurt. When you really think about it, making people miserable through a never-ending stream of multicasts, isn't that the real gift of the Magi? Ogre Magi is a pair of idiots wrapped up into one great time. Under your control, the Goddess of Luck will bless Agron Stonebreak with a string of successful multicasts, provided a squirrel doesn't run by to distract him. All you need to do is close your eyes, lock in, and leave it to chance. I'm Dennis the Tall, and that was the history of Ogre Magi. A very special thank you goes out to Ashley Lanchester, a viewer from Indonesia who helped provide footage of Ogre Magi gameplay for this episode. With the help, I was able to get the episode out faster. Which, come on, everyone wants that, right? If you would like to contribute in the future, please keep an eye out on my community tab, Twitter, Patreon, or Instagram. Last time I asked, what's the best way to build Razor? James De Jesus builds 6 boots of travel, more movement speed, the happier Razor gets. Tyrone and Chimp Roshi both understand that 6 Wraith Bands is the correct answer, while Lil What Number 1 goes up to 9. Finally, we had some pretty good advice from Michael Reynolds, Finger Boy, and Mr. Bizarre Bay, who recommend going Mask of Madness while explaining the logic and reasoning behind it. YouTube comments are meant for bad opinions and shitposts. Come on guys, get with it. 
Anywho, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram, support the channel on Patreon, click on all these doodads, and I have absolutely nothing else to say. It's been a long episode. See you soon.